Hi, my name's Roxanne Mann, and I am uh, here doing a video for you. And as always, I get ahead of myself and was painting before I realized I didn't have my video camera on. So right now you see transfer paper that I have cut out in my design and placed on a black canvas that I had stretched myself. Uh, the transfer paper is just uh, a material that's used uh, with sign artists to transfer vinyl onto their uh, sign. And I use it quite often. I have a vinyl plotter and I use it for uh, taping off lots of things when I'm painting. Um, here you see me going over uh, the area that I've already sprayed in white with red. And uh, we're going to be building up our color. Uh, I'll be going from white to red to orange to yellow, back to white to red to orange to yellow. And it's just a process of layering. I am using uh, Cretex Illustration Colors. And it's kind of a transfer base, transparent base paint. And uh, you can see other colors through it. That's why I like to use it. Um, it's it's kind of hard on a black background, but you can layer it up to where it, it gives you a quite bright looking uh, a glow when you're doing flames. The ratio I like to use with my paint is one part paint to one part reducer. The reducer I am using is 4011 by Cretex and uh, I use one part of that to one part of distilled water and I fill it up in a, a big like squeeze bottle that I do half part reducer and half distilled water. You could just use distilled water if you wanted to or uh, a water that you get drinking just regular drink not out of the faucet but re regular drinking water like a bottle of water that you would purchase that's kind of like a not from takes out all the impurities and things from it the airbrush I'm using here is the uh, GSI ProBoy uh, Creos I believe it's the 267. Um, they have updated their airbrushes now. I think there's a 289, 270. Um, I have the um, also the Micron, the 771 Creos. Um, it's very, very similar to the Iwata Micro Custom. custom micron <laughs> set it backwards but anyway um yeah i'm not being very uh precise right now or particular where i'm laying the red paint i'm just kind of following the lines but if it gets outside those lines that's okay we want that glow to be outside of the area onto the black because when we do layer yellow we don't want a greenish tint to that. Now, nine times out of ten, that will still happen. But there's you just go back over it with a little white and build it back up to where you don't have the green tint. Um, you'd never want to leave it because it just does not look right at all. I make my own stencils from just uh, Marlar sheets that you can get on Amazon. Um, or if you have a um, laminate machine, you can put a couple sheets of laminate together to stiffen it up and run it through your machine and then draw out your stencil design and cut it out from there to do fire stencils hole stencils, um, texture stencils, any kind. And you can either cut it out with an X-Acto knife, scissors, or uh, you can even use a burner. I like to use burners when, I, when I'm when i doing textured stencils. 
Now here I have taken uh, just a regular brush, uh, liner brush with some illustration white, and I have one around the outsides of this transfer paper, as you can see, with uh, just a, a bright white uh, line, and out some into the fire. And as I build back up this color over top of this, uh, probably two more times, I think, from here, from this point, it will dull that bright white out some to where it's not so shocking, but you can still see the bright highlight. And here it looks like I'm uh, laying the yellow over top. And I'm probably holding down some on, when I go around and spray with the airbrush it will lift up some of the uh, transfer paper there, so I am using my fingers to keep that down some. I wear gloves because uh, I'm a woman, of course. I don't like paint under my fingernails, but I wear gloves because I just got used to working that way in the, when I was using automotive paints. And two, um, I don't want any oils from my fingers to get on my painting because I think this painting, I want to resin it. I know it's very large, but the, the just detail uh, depth that it gives when you use resin over it is just amazing. And you just can't get a better look as far as I'm concerned. Now I could clear coat it with another top coating, but I just want to use the resin. Here you can see I went ahead and finished all the yellow and I am going to be uh, rinsing out my airbrush here. As you can see, it's in one of those um, squeeze bottles, uh, half and half. And I don't know what I did there if I didn't just put a little drop of it in there to thin the paint. But I'm going to be going back over this with red. And you could even at this point, if you wanted to go to a deeper red, you could. You could go to a scarlet red, and it would bring out uh, a lot more depth because of the bright red that I used before. There's no wrong or right way to do fire. There's different kinds of fire. Um, I prefer a rolling fire, but... Um, um, a lot of people do the little licks and the flames like I think there's another video on here that I had done that but I prefer um, you know the more burning rolling fire and I know I don't know if that's even telling you what I mean but I'd like to do sooner or later I'd like to do a um, oh a, a uh, less tutorial on that but it's probably going to be a while. I have a um, piece of work I need to get on after I put this on, which is an eagle. And I would like to do a video of that as I go along, if I can remember to turn the video on. <laughs> but I get excited when I want to paint, and uh, I just want to jump in there and start it. And, and then I forget about, uh, you know, lining things up to, to do a live so I can put it on the my YouTube channel but it will be an eagle with a mountain in the background and um, very very pretty one I think I'm pointing out here that in between the major uh, licks of flame you can see other uh, depths of flames coming through from underneath it's not showing very well on the video here but you can see it um, at the end of this video you'll see a picture of the completed uh, completed artwork but it it's not resined so uh, one day when I get it resined I may add it at the end of one of the other videos so that you can see that, but um, but for now it's just a completed art piece and 
And you can still see a lot of really good detail in it. It's just amazing what the resin will bring out. Oh, and in the back, since this is a very large canvas, uh, when you pour resin over top of it, it will kind of, you know, want to all go to the middle part to to bow the canvas, and you don't want that. So what I do is I actually get a thick piece of cardboard, and I put into the back of that to firm that up so that the resin does not all sink in the middle. Now here you can see I've completed spraying all red all around the yellow, and I've cut out the eyes of this transfer paper, and I'm spraying white, and I cut out the nose, and I'm spraying white in there just to give me a good uh, area of wh where I'm to start at. And then later on you'll see me pull up the transfer paper and cut out even more to give me a good guiding point because we do not want to lose our perspective here of where things are, are when I go to paint the face of the lion and put in all the hair and things like that. Now there's my exacto knife and I'm going to be pulling this up and cutting the teeth out I believe so I can see where the teeth will be laying. And you want to of course make sure you're not cutting your hands underneath. You want to put your fingers where they need to be and not and you always want to use a really sharp exacto knife because you don't want to be trying to push in there to cut the paper when you've got your hand underneath it. So you want something that's going to go uh, the cut pretty quick. I'm lining it back up so I make sure I have my proportions right. I'm cutting out the other tooth there. And for the most part, I can freehand it. I, I'm mostly a freehand artist, but I do like to use stencils for little parts of uh, the completed artwork. And sometimes when you get when you get better at airbrushing, um, there's ways to get around the. Uh, there's ways to get around the overspray you know you learn to tilt your airbrush different ways so that it doesn't you don't get a lot of overspray in the other areas and um and it, and it's all how you're shading now here i've taken the transfer paper off and i guess you can see i've got the two eyes the nose and the the mouth there and here i've cut a section off of the transfer paper and i'm laying it back on and this is going to give me the out, outside part of his face to where the hair would start. Or his mane wouldn't be hair, it'd be fur. But There you see I've sprayed in a few little ears there. I'm not for sure if that's exactly where they go, but... I'll probably lay on the crown here in a little bit to line it up to see. As you can see, just a little bit of white gives me a good outline to where I can start laying in the mane, the fur of the mane. I think I'm putting the crown on his head just to get a good idea where the ear was. And I was a little off there, but we can fix that. I'm going to spray in some fur up there. It 
kind of see my doggy in the background there. He likes to come to the shop with me, and he, he lays on the chair back there while Mama works. And if I'm working on something that's really stinky, of course, he's never with me. I'm very careful with my dog. This is just kind of a design I was showing you that I sketched out. I was just kind of looking at it to see where to go from there. And uh, where I needed to add my, my things in. As you see, I'm taking off the tip of my um, airbrush there and picking off that paint that gets dried on the end. Uh, one thing I use that I have is a little piece of torn sponge that I like to dip in the mix the thinner mixture that I have of uh, half and half distilled water and 4011 and and I will actually put that sponge on there and kind of turn it around clockwise so that it will not only take off the tip of the dried paint but sometimes your paint will like if you're really spraying heavy, will clog up around the outside of that that tip there, and it it will get kind of crusty. So that uh, sponge kind of helps to take that off too, so it doesn't interfere with the spray pattern on uh, if it if your air will shoot out to the side or the left instead of just coming straight out. And here I'm starting to build up the white on the his face here snout whatever you want to call it I'm using a stencil here to just kind of keep a lot of the overspray away from parts I didn't want it. I think I kept stepping on my hose is what I'm having trouble with here. Some t I had my air compressor on the left hand side and I was stippling the nose to where you'd get kind of highlighted on top of the nose there.
I'm sorry that my arm is blocking the view. It's kind of hard with the way I had the camera uh, focus there. And I uh, had something else ordered to where it would be right on my chest when I video. So you'd just get the front view and it wouldn't, it wouldn't um, cause any kind of disruption. But if you have to set it up. Here I'm kind of sketching in where I want this um, key to be just to get an idea. Now I know the hair is going to be, or the, the hair is going to be coming out and going through that or over that or whatever, but I just wanted to know where I wanted to put it. And uh, here you see me begin to lay in some of the main. Probably picking up my car going by on the highway there. Here I kind of speed it up a little bit.
It just takes time. It's just a process of layering, layering. I think this whole painting I did within a week, but you know, working on it, you're you're putting in a lot of time on it, and then of course you get tired, and you want to always step back and take a look at your work, and come back in and go, you know, because usually you can see something when you uh, walk away from it for a little bit and then come back in and look at it. You can always spot what you need to do or sometimes you just need to take that break. See me move on to where I sped it up to where now it's got most of the main um, kind of shaded in. Of course, I'm going to go back and highlight a lot of areas, but I've even started working on the crown up here. I try to have the air going all the time, but it's not always spitting out pain all the time. I'm I'm moving my needle back and forth real little, uh, but I've always got that air, air on. If it's pressed down all the way forward, there's just air coming out. If you pull back a little bit, then that releases the paint. And here I'm starting to put in some wrinkles and a snarly look from the lion. I'm looking back and forth at my sketch I drew out um, to see where I wanted the highlights to be. And here's the completed picture.